The other thing that's challenging is the CT venogram, right? Just being able to time it correctly, get the kind in those technologists being trained at that and having a good protocol, hemodynamics can change that. So we always kind of, whenever there's suspicion of something, you would kind of jump to the MRI just because that would seem to be most definitive. But maybe can you elaborate on that and, and maybe how people can improve their, obviously ultrasound tech, you can get your technologists some better training, but any suggestions for CT venograms? Yeah. CT venogram I tend not to use, although I'll say if we look nationally at what is used most, I think it is used more than MR, partially because people are more likely to get the information as non-radiologists from that than they are from the MR, partially because of the training and the sort of protocols that are being used, and also expertise availability. We have a very robust MR protocol practice, and it's actually both CT and MR are done by, for this particular indication, are done by the interventional radiologists in our group. And we love MR for this, MR particularly with contrast. And yes, the time-resolved images that can be done, you know, depending whether you have you know, GE, Philips, they're all going to be named different things, but Siemens, but the time-resolved pictures can be really impactful in, in the way that we present what we see to our colleagues and to our patients, but I tend to rely on the post-contrast, and we'll just describe in the Siemens la lingo, lava images, or, C or rather GE la lingo, where we have steady state imaging with high resolution because of the contrast being around. And I tend to view them axially, and I, I get a lot of information in terms of the size of the ovarian veins, the size of the what the renal vein and the iliac vein looks like, common iliac vein, but also it's a great way to see the pelvic varicosities both inside the uterus and or you know in the plexi around the uterus. So that's kind of our approach. We are developing the experience with ultrasound. We had a tech who was very good at it and it was hard to find somebody to replace her when she left. And now we have another tech and between myself and one of the other physicians who's very interested in promoting ultrasound, we're getting her up to speed and we're sort of doing a hodgepodge of both ultrasound and MRI to evaluate these patients.